Hi everyone, this is Neo from the Overclocker magazine. Today I'm bringing you a review on the RX 5500 XT, particularly one from ROG, like the last graphics card uh, review that I bought you. So this graphics card, at least according to AMD positioning, was supposed to be just for 1080p gaming. And having tested this graphics card for a few weeks, I must tell you that it actually is for 1080p gaming and, and little else. However, having said that, that doesn't mean that this is a VGA that you should necessarily ignore, particularly given the price point that the, in general at least, that the 5500 XT cards come at. So just a general overview of the specs, what you're looking at here is a Navi 14, right? Uh, you've probably gone through all the features, the supported functionality and so forth. So I'm not going to repeat that. You can actually just read that on the website and things like that. What I'm here to talk to you about basically is just this particular graphics card, which is, I think, one of the best iterations of the 5500 XT that money can buy. It's a fairly simplistic card with little to no RGB lighting outside of this Asus or ROG motif that you see over here. But other than that, it's just, it's the simplicity actually makes it appealing. I'm not going to say this is one of the best looking cards because I think I've seen other ones, maybe even from Asus themselves, that are more appealing to me. However, it is one of the better looking cards and what helps with that is having things like the back plate here, which actually in this model works for technical reasons as well. It's not just aesthetics because when you open this up, you'll actually see that the thermal pads, at least I think two of them, which help obviously with cooling. The back of the card here, you'll see you have three display port outputs and one HDMI 2.0 output. And I think all of them support FreeSync. So as for the PCB itself, I didn't open it actually because this is a review sample. However, having said that, you get one 8-pin power connector here obviously because the PCI Express bus wouldn't be able to provide too, uh, enough power for that. Here you get the on-off switch for the RGB lights, the only singular light they have here. And you also get the BIOS switch. This changes between I think quiet mode and normal performance mode. It's not going to really make much of a difference, particularly uh, using it in quiet mode. Because the graphics card is, is extraordinarily quiet. Okay, obviously in a tight case where there's lots of heat and so forth, the fans do spin up a bit. But overall, it was very difficult to hear this card over any other of my machine. Uh, PC fans and things like that. So in terms of noise, even though I didn't measure it technically, it's not something that I would necessarily concern myself with. But outside of that, let's basically take a look at what else this card has. So as I mentioned, we have the three display ports and HDMI, the on off switch here for the LED, the dual BIOS option, quiet and normal mode. But we also have something that I was not expecting on such a card, which is the fan controller, rather not fan control, but fan support right over here it's only one fan header but as with all the or at least the previous graphics card this just allows you to control whatever system fan that you want to tack on to your graphics card heat and things like that the software which we're all familiar with will allow you to configure any one of those features and things like that without wasting much of your time so let's just get into the performance because ultimately that's what you came here for right so let's get on with it A lot of vendors might promise you that their particular model, card, GPU, whatever, particularly when it's a new series, are perfect for 1080p gaming. But over a while you start to realize that how can all these cards be the perfect card for 1080p gaming? Okay, so you have to qualify that. With this Strix models, you actually don't have to. 
at all because I basically tested with the highest image fidelity for all the games that I tried with this card and it was able to produce the results barring I think Metro Exodus and perhaps Borderlands 3 and the thing is with those two games the actual benchmark that I was running for determining the performance of this card is almost is a fly through and the fly through isn't a representation of what you will actually experience and in my experience i found that it actually loads the graphics card in a way that is not really related to what you'll be playing but what i mean by that is it might report for instance in borderlands 3 that this card only does 39 frames per second at 1080p using better quality but that isn't actually what you end up experiencing. The actual gameplay is much faster than that. In fact, it's very playable. And if you use obviously a free sync monitor, you don't really have to worry about tearing and things like that, provided that it's a good one. What I notice here is that um, you can obviously turn down graphics fidelity a little bit to get faster performance, but I don't think it's worth it because what it gives you isn't that much more. And given that, like I said previously, a lot of the a lot of the performance is over 50 frames per second. There really isn't much need for that. So overall, you just plug the card in, install the drivers and start playing. Now, talking about overclocking as well, this is where AMD here really puts out the party. So you can basically max out the slider on most graphics cards, uh, the memory slider at least, and perhaps even the GPU slider. These are built-in limitations and we can't really do anything about them. So overclocking is pretty much nullified when it comes to these cards. In terms of the RX 5500 XT GPU itself, I don't think they come much better than this one, but overall this is a fairly solid card and it's not just 1080p gaming in wishful thinking, it actually is 1080p gaming with the highest image fidelity possible. Alright then, until next time, don't forget to like, share, subscribe and I'll see you fairly soon I think. Alright, take care and peace.